we're going to start. Um, hi, uh, my name is Tsukuru Force, and uh, uh, I'm so honored and excited to present here at the BFP National uh, Annual Convention with my um, friend, uh, Michael Lindley. Um, so um, first of all, uh, you know, before I jump in, uh, you know, uh, into this program itself, I just want to acknowledge some people uh, who are very important, who are very um, instrumental for us to be here. So uh, first person, uh, Mr. Patrick McCann, uh, the board of directors, VFP. Uh, actually, I've never met him, but he was the person who contacted me because he somehow found the event that I do uh, related to Fukushima uh, in March uh, every year. And he encouraged me to submit my proposal. So without his encouragement, I wouldn't be here. So uh, thank you, Patrick. And uh, second of all, uh, I would like to acknowledge uh, Jerry Condon, uh, who is also a um, you know, uh, friend and person who I greatly admire. Um, yeah, he's been... Um, very, very uh, encouraging to me, uh, supporting me, uh, supporting me in my activism. And I really appreciate that. And the third person I want to acknowledge, uh, Michael uh, Lindley, who is a presentation partner with me here today. And uh, uh, something about Michael, you know, I met him uh, about, I guess, two years ago, two and a half years ago, uh, because, um, I, I, I visited him at the Arlington West out of blue, wanting to do this booth uh, about uh, Okinawa, uh, because that's like one of the areas that I'm active in, uh, you know, advocating for uh, uh, peace in Okinawa and uh, um, no military bases in Okinawa. So, uh, so I, I went to Michael and, uh, you know, I just asked him if I can do, set up my booth. Uh, information booth about Okinawa, and he welcomed me uh, with open arms, and uh, uh, we were friends. We have been friends ever since. Yeah. So, um, yeah, thank you so much, Michael. Um, thank you. Yeah. So, um, Veterans for Peace. Uh, I am an associate member of Veterans for Peace and uh, uh, co-founder of Pacific Asian Nuclear Free Peace Alliance, and I'm also uh, active in. Korea, Korea Peace Now Alliance, uh, or actually Korea Peace Now grassroots campaign. Um, so um, veterans for peace though, I, I really do have to say that um, I consider you, I mean, I not only I myself, I'm an associate member, but I consider you guys as uh, one of my greatest allies uh, in you know, uh, achieving peace and no nukes. And uh, uh, it's, what you guys do is so remarkable and uh, the spirit and action that you bring to the world, uh, I greatly appreciate and I just respect and admire you from the bottom of my heart. So it's such an honor to be here today. And thank uh, you. I'm so glad, yeah, thank you, Michael. I'm so glad that you guys are here to, uh, you know, uh, listen to what we have to say, but uh, also like, you know, work on this together. So um, now finally, I'm gonna jump in uh, to my presentation. So uh, the two faces nuclear, the title, you know, from Fukushima to, uh, from Hiroshima, Nagasaki to Fukushima, um, is, it comes from like my uh, very personal experience and uh, my, my journey uh, as an activist. So a um, little bit about my background. I was born in Sasebo, Nagasaki, which I'm sure uh, many of you are familiar with because we have a US military base in Sasebo. And uh, so I spent my uh, 12, first 12 years of my life in Sasebo, Nagasaki. And I ended up in a school in Hiroshima where 350 students uh, died on August 6th. Well, because of the A bomb, you know, they may they may have lived like after that, but um, as a result of the bomb, uh, they died. Three hundred fifty young lives were lost. So um, 
so you know having that kind of like personal uh, intimate experience and relationship with the victims of a bomb uh, many of my many of teachers uh, at my school were survivors and also like you know um, when you go to a school like that in Hiroshima uh, almost everyone that you know like everyone that you you know your classmates uh, has someone in their life uh, who either died because of the bomb or who were affected uh, you know by the bomb so you know I I always considered myself you know uh, being aware of the issue you know being aware of the danger of nuclear and uh, I spent my adult life you know kind of going about my own business and um, um, so when Fukushima Daiichi nuclear disaster happened in 2011, it was personally shocking and devastating to me because, as I said, I consider myself as highly aware individual, but I was completely blindsided by this because I wasn't aware of this part, this side of nuclear. So, um, you know, even though I went to the school in Hiroshima, uh, who, you know, uh, is very much uh, involved in, uh, uh, in peace education, you know, what I realized after Fukushima is that, uh, you know, I almost never, we almost never heard about nuclear power, nuclear energy. Because it was always, you know, ever since the war, it was always advocated in Japan as a peacetime use of nuclear. So there was like a bad side and good side of nuclear, you know, bad side being a nuclear weapons. So we say like, okay, so we should never have that, use that, you know, um, like that. And, and good side of nuclear, which is nuclear power, nuclear power plants, nuclear energy, yeah, so that's the way to the future. You know, we have to utilize that. So that was like what we were taught. And after Fukushima, I realized that, uh, you know, what a lie that was, you know, and I was devastated. I was angry. Um, I was angry, uh, most of all, at myself, actually, because, um, you know, I, I just couldn't, understand like why I didn't see that why I didn't I didn't see you know these were uh, two sides of the same coin nuclear weapons and nuclear power you know nuclear energy so that inspired this presentation uh, the two faces of nuclear and uh, uh, that brings me the purpose of today um, so the purpose of today, I'm just going to tell you up front so that we have the same understanding. Um, so, you know, ever since Fukushima, I started to realize and I started to kind of obsess, actually, <laughs> about the need for education uh, in, in the danger of nuclear. And uh, the education is uh, almost non-existent. Unfortunately, both in Japan and the United States, this may surprise you, uh, surprise you all, but in Japan, unless you go to school, like my, you know, like my school in Hiroshima or Nagasaki, uh, you really do not learn much about uh, what happened in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Because it's just like part of like, it's a small part of modern history, which uh, we just kind of like quickly go over because uh, Japanese education is so focused on, uh, you know, the uh, uh, university entrance exam or, um, yeah. So uh, modern history is like kind of like quickly skipped over because it's like the last part that we studied, right? So as a result, uh, we don't really learn much about uh, A-bomb experience. But I think, you know, it's, uh, there's a great need, you know, obviously, I think I'm speaking to the choir, but. Uh, obviously, there's a great need uh, to teach young people and also about like grown-ups about what happened in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, 
But not only that, you know, as, as people talking about uh, in, the, in yesterday's session, there's a great need to talk about all people who are uh, victims and survivors of all nuclear atrocities. So not only Hiroshima, Nagasaki, Fukushima. So, um, so today's, you know, the purpose of the presentation today is uh, to inspire you, uh, if it's possible, inspire you, inspire all of us together uh, to do sort of community-based education in your own communities, in your own local areas. And uh, uh, I will use resources that are available to you for free, mostly. Uh, actually, for all of all of all of free. So, uh, whatever I present today, actually, you can do this also uh, with free resources that you can reach out to. So, um, this presentation I think is uh, pretty unique um, in like all of the programs that we have at the convention this year uh, because it's it's very like highly highly personal and highly emotional. Um, and uh, it's a multimedia presentation, so we're gonna have a lot of fun, I think. Okay, so uh, let's just, um, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna actually look at the chat right now. Okay, so uh, yeah, uh, one housekeeping note. Uh, so we're gonna do like Q&A session at the uh, very end of this workshop. So if you have any questions, uh, please use Q&A uh, function instead of chat because uh, we don't want to mix the two, you know, uh, it may get confusing. So thank you so much. And uh, let me uh, share the screen right now. And uh, all right, so, so the first thing that I'm going to bring up, and uh, uh, I apologize in advance if I screw up a little bit because um, yeah, this is kind of new to me too. So um, I'm going to present a story or stories about the Hibakusha experience in Hiroshima using collection of Hiroshima Peace Memorial Museum. Um, so uh, as this page says, this presentation was made possible, is possible by the courtesy of Hiroshima Peace Memorial Museum. And anything you see in this presentation is available to you for free with some paperwork and guidelines to follow, uh, you know, such as like you have to specify like where you use this and uh, when you're gonna use this. And, uh, you know, you have to kind of sign the paperwork and stuff like that. But uh, on their website, there's a section called Peace Database. And uh, you can find a bunch of like photos and uh, drawings by Hibakusha that we're going to see today uh, and uh, video testimonies. And uh, so uh, what you can do is like, you know, go to their peace database and uh, find what you like, you know, what you may want to use in your own event or education programs. And you just have to contact the uh, curatorial department at, um, Hiroshima Peace Memorial Museum. So, so, uh, so I'm gonna start my storytelling. So, um, when we hear Hiroshima, uh, unfortunately, I think the uh, image that we have is a devastated city by uh, the A-bomb. But in fact, when the A-bomb hit, Hiroshima was a modern city with vibrant life. And people loved the city of Hiroshima and the people so proud of their hometown. So let us travel back in time. Uh, and I'm gonna bring in this short video to show you in 1935, how the city of Hiroshima looked like. Okay, wait, I'm just gonna switch. I'm not very, uh, hold on, yeah. I'm gonna switch the media. Oh, wait, hold on. Yeah, let me just switch the media. <laughs> um, not very elegant, I guess, in this screen. Oh. 
Okay. Um, I don't know. Hold, hold on. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Let me, and I try this again. <laughs> yeah. I, I think I know what the problem is actually right now, what I'm doing. Okay. Oh yeah, okay, good. So I just escaped it. So yeah, now I'm gonna bring in a video. Okay, so as I said, this was taken in 1935, 10 years before the bomb uh, dropped over the sky of Hiroshima. And um, as you can see, it was a very vibrant uh, town. Uh, manufacturing center of the uh, Chugoku region of Japan. And you can see such a mix mixture of people, you know, with the uh, uh, modern Western style clothing and also like traditional uh, kimono type clothing as well. And um, when I see this video, I don't know, it just, it just kind of breaks my heart. Uh, it's, it's because uh, young girls walking around. Okay, I'm gonna stop talking. I'm just gonna uh, end the video and talk again. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Going back to my presentation. Uh, Okay, so um, what I was saying was, uh, as you can see, um, so many like girls, you know, very like in you know, a fashionable uh, garbs walking around makes me think of, uh, you know, students at my school. And when I was studying there, I often think, you know, about like uh, what it must have been like uh, because these were ordinary girls they just lived way back when in, you know, 1945. But if you can think of like teenage girls nowadays, uh, you know, if you know someone in your life, if you, if you have daughters who are teenagers, uh, these girls were not much different. Uh, of course, that was a wartime. So, you know, things were short, you know, like they didn't have a lot of things. But, you know, because like they wanted to uh, be fashionable, they did things like, you know, with the uh, uh, inside of their kimono, uh, they may get like a little remnant of fabric, which is like, you know, uh, colorful, uh, with the colorful patterns and stuff like that. And they, they sewed it on, onto their kimono so that they can just kind of uh, experience a little bit of their individuality in wartime. So they were like ordinary girls, you know, who liked chatting with friends and stuff like that, hanging out and, and, you know, this happened. So I wanted to show you the contrast of the vibrant city and uh, this devastation uh, that happened after the bomb. And this was photographed by the US Army. Uh, most photos that we see nowadays, uh, you know, were taken by the US Army because um, as you can imagine, like there was no one who can take pictures, you know, uh, no Japanese can take pictures these days uh, in the devastated city. So now I'm gonna take you through the stories of Hipakusha. Um, so many people talk about uh, Pika Don. Pika means flash and Don is the blast. So, but some people talk about, um, you know, they didn't actually hear the dawn, uh, the blast. They just saw the flash of light, which was so bright that they were engulfed in this uh, flash. So this person, Shiro Tsukihara, uh, was age 16 at the time of the bombing. And uh, he painted this picture when he was age 73. 
And uh, uh, so when you go to Hiroshima Peace Memorial website, uh, Hiroshima Memorial Museum website, great thing about uh, the website and its resources is that, so you can uh, not only borrow these uh, pictures, uh, there's like, you know, there are descriptions that come with it. Uh, so it specifies the uh, victim's age uh, when, you know, uh, when they were exposed to, to the bomb and where they were uh, from the hypocenter. So this person was, uh, you know, 2.4 miles from hypocenter. So uh, after the bomb, after the initial flash and blast, uh, many people lost consciousness. And when they came to, what they saw was a living hell. So this person, Masako Yoshiyama, she was age 13 at the time of the bombing, one mile from hypocenter. Uh, just about where my school was and is. So he saw, I mean, she saw uh, the flames, you know, fires everywhere. And uh, somebody in a uh, fire screaming, it hurts, help. So that's the, that was the common sight that people, see, people saw. Another sight that was mentioned, that's mentioned often by the survivors, well, the river and a uh, uh, river full of bodies, uh, people trying to escape from the heat and fire, and also uh, people wanting to drink from the river. So uh, Yoshio Take Takaha Takahara was age 34 at the time of the bombing, 0 0.4 mile from hypocenter. So streets filled with roof tiles and pieces of wood were impassable, so everyone headed to the river. Some died and were swept away. So at the beginning of the presentation, you saw the video uh, footage, and uh, there was a river, and the river Otagawa, uh, especially, I mean, there are several rivers in the city of Hiroshima, but Otagawa is a um, kind of center uh, of Hiroshima people, you know, people in Hiroshima uh, and their life. So they uh, try to escape from the heat and also, but they try to, you know, as, as um, Yoshio says, they were trying to, uh, you know, pass to the other side. So they, you know, get it, got into the river, but uh, many of them did not make it to the other side. Another thing that people saw, uh, you know, people who were like living beings, but uh, look like ghosts. Um, Kichisuke Yoshimura, age 18 at the time of the bombing, 2.6 miles from the hypocenter. Their clothes ripped to shreds, their skin hanging down. On the riverbank, I saw figures that seemed to be from another world. Ghost-like, their hair falling over their faces, their clothes ripped to shreds, their skin hanging. A cluster of these injured persons was moving wordlessly towards the outskirts. Another theme that we have from the Hibakusha, uh, uh, Hibakusha stories, black rain. So the black rain started to fall uh, about 30 to 40 minutes after the bomb. And uh, people who were really uh, you know, hot and thirsty from the uh, fire and heat uh, started to drink the rain. And uh, of course, the rain was radioactive. So a lot of people had uh, internal um, exposure, uh, internal damage because of that. And uh, the common sight was, um, so I'm gonna show you like next several pictures, maybe like three, four drawings uh, has a common theme of uh, people not being able to help someone. Uh, because they were trying to run for their lives as well. So this drawing is titled, Mom. So Fujioka Hisayuki, uh, 12 at the age of the bombing, uh, he was at the 0 0.6, 0 0.9 miles from the hype center. Hurry, hurry, desperate to get away from the approaching fire, a mother holding her child by the hand was running, running, but not very successfully because of her long kimono. The mother let go of her child, shouting, run quickly, and 
I'll catch up with you. At that very moment, a tornado-like swirl of fire engulfed and swallowed the mother. The child collapsed into tears, screaming, Mom, Mom. So another picture. Uh, Shisako Sasaki, age 19, at the time of the bombing, 0 0.9 miles from the hype center. I heard a very young girl shouting for help from a burning upstairs window. The memory still haunts me. Yoshinori Kato, 17 at the end of the bombing, uh, 1.2 miles from the hype center. The elementary school had collapsed completely and became engulfed in flames while its pupils remained trapped underneath. Help! I could hear the shouts squeezed out with all their remaining strength, but had no choice but to run from the falling sparks of fire. So um, I just have to point out, I want to point out that one of the things that survivors um, suffered from, uh, you know, one of the things that tormented them was uh, being unable to help someone. And it's a common story uh, from the Hibakusha experience. Um, and, uh, you know, that sight of uh, someone engulfed in flames or uh, being underneath of the uh, building uh, still haunt uh, many of them. So this is uh, Tomomi Yamasha, age 16, at the time of the bombing, 2.2 miles from uh, hypocenter. So the whole body was so deeply charred that the gender was unrecognizable, yet the person was weakly writhing. I had to avert my eyes from the unbearable sight, but it entrenched itself in my memory for the rest of my life. And the night came on August 6th. Uh, many people mentioned the, uh, the whole city of Hiroshima was in flame. Um, and uh, so this person was age eight at the time of the bombing, 1.6 miles from the hypocenter. And actually, I, I guess, the, this drawing was uh, the dawn, the, uh, the site of the you know, dawn and uh, how the city looked and the memory of that. Next morning, August 7th, a mother was calling her child from the bridge. The river underneath was full of dead children. Sueko Sumitomo, uh, Sumimoto was age 37 at the time of the bombing. 0.4 mile from the hypocenter. Most of the area's victims were mobilized students of similar stature and all aged around 13 or 14. The dead children filled the river and the riverbank, some drifting downstream, bobbing up and down like floating white radishes. On each of the stone steps leading to the river were bodies of children who looked as if they had cascaded on top of each other. It was heartbreaking to see their young, innocent faces. There was also a mother calling her child. And uh, so next, including the previous one, next three, four pictures, a common theme is mother and child. So this picture was drawn by Kazuo Matsumo, Matsu, uh, Matsumuro. Uh, he drew this at age 61, but he was age 32 at the time of the bombing, 0 0.5 miles from hypocenter. Where shall I burn the body of my dead child? White maggots crawled in the face, burns of the child she carried on her back. She probably picked up the metal helmet as a receptacle for her child's bones. She had to walk quite a distance to find the combustible material for the fire. Mitsuko Taguchi was age 30 at the time of the bombing, 0.6 mile from the hypocenter. Carrying her child, she had probably been unable to outrun the flames. Her hair was standing on end. She still protected her child under her breast like a living person. Her eyes will open wide. I cannot forget that shocking sight. Shinsaku Koguchi 
was age 25 at the time of the bombing, 0.3 mile from hypocenter. Seeing the dead child made me see how the mother died. I could imagine the cries of pain, how they must have loathed to die. The story of death narrated by the pair froze my faculty to think. Stupefied, I stared at the bodies. I apologized about human sinfulness to no one in particular. I simply could not leave without burning myself with a portion of this agony. So another thing that's very common among Hibakusha, uh, the victims and survivors of the A-bomb experience, is the, uh, their guilt and the enormous, this enormous sense of loss of humanity that they experienced on that day. Um, so they witnessed something that's just unthinkable for humans to do uh, on another human beings. And also, you know, again, uh, being powerless in the uh, situation really, you know, um, gravely pained them. Uh, yeah, um, so that's the common experience. So next three, four pictures, the theme is people looking for loved ones. So Fumie Ishikawa was age 16 at the time of the bombing, 1.9 miles from hypocenter. I went around looking closely at anyone who had a build, build similar to my younger brother. I found one of his friends, Van, passed away at the entrance, but my younger brother wasn't there. Hisako Murata was age 29 at the time of the bombing, 3.1 mile from hypocenter. Dead children were laid in rows underneath straw mats on the veranda of a temple. An injured mother, looking distraught, was turning the mats over one by one in search of her child. Kiyomi Kono, age 14 at the time of the bombing, 0.9 mile from hypocenter, corpses piled like lumber on the circular flower bed in front of the entrance to the Red Cross Hospital. Corpses of first and second year junior high students had been piled on each other like lumber. They had no sign of injury or burn. Their name tags read second Hiroshima junior. So these are the last two pictures on August 8th. Um, so basically, uh, just dead bodies after dead bodies um, on the street and uh, people remembering these sites. So um, I'm just gonna switch to um, myself uh, and uh, you know, actually, uh, I'm realizing that like I spent so much time like going through that picture. You're running out of time, and I prepared so many things for you. Um, but uh, you know, the point of this presentation. So I'm not gonna go over all of them today. But what I wanted to say uh, is that you can use this kind of resources. And uh, I, I'm not gonna show this uh, to you today, but there are video recordings, uh, video testimonies of Hibakusha available for free as well. Uh, and not many of them are translated into Japanese, I mean, into English, unfortunately, but uh, there are ways to present that also in your own communities. So that what's great about the drawings though, uh, so I've hosted uh, many events uh, relating to anti-nuke, and one of the debates that we have uh, always is, uh, so are the pictures too graphic, you know, for people to see? Because, um, you know, people are not used to that, not used to seeing, uh, you know, charred bodies, like dead bodies and things like that. And well, I'm kind of, kind of glad about that too, but also um, it's been like my dilemma 
uh, not being able to show uh, these pictures from, uh, from um, the ABOM experience. But when I found these drawings, uh, you know, I was inspired to show them because people actually were able to look at them and appreciate the stories behind these drawings. And they are very, very impactful uh, and effective. And so um, I guess actually I'm gonna pass, uh, pass it on to Michael Bentley uh, because um, he's gonna talk about, among other things, he's gonna talk about uh, this a great event that we did two years ago on August 5th uh, at the Santa Monica Beach. Um, so Michael, oh, I, I'm gonna start the presentation, sorry. You could bring up the picture. That's right, yep. Let's see here. Oh, hold on. Escape and uh, I'll move to the rest. Yep. Yeah, here we go. Uh, first, I want to say uh, Sukru is a uh, one heck of a uh, activist in this in the field of uh, nuclear anything nuclear. She's uh, really gets involved, and, and I really thank her for that. Um, Another person I want to thank very much is uh, Kathleen Hernandez. Uh, she was pretty well involved into this into this project too. Uh, uh, she really worked hard, and then then the rest that would be uh, we have two Steves, we have a Julie, we have a Kenny, and uh, oh, she's I hope I don't forget anybody. And Kathleen, and uh, anyway. We got Michael Chavez from uh, from uh, sent, uh, from uh, up up north. Uh, anyway, so uh, the memorial itself, uh, we were we had the memorial up for uh, every Sunday for thirteen years. We never missed a Sunday in thirteen years. And then we got two months into the uh, second uh, uh, second that second month, those two months, and they shut us down. Of course, the pandemic, you know. Uh, but we're we're you know we're uh, we're going to put it back up. We're going to get it back up. We're, we've been talking about it. Uh, we're right now where they're in the area where they're at. Um, yeah. Oh, Ed Ellis too. I'm very sorry about that. Ed, 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 Ed Ellis is a super super person. Thank you, Kathleen. Um, so we're going to be putting it back up. But uh, one of the things that we do in in, in the memorial is, is these pictures. Uh, uh, Move along, uh, is that uh, we bring in students from uh, uh, from uh, uh, from different schools. We have them from Fairfax High School here in LA, uh, San Pedro. There's three schools in San Pedro, and Santa Monica, and and things like, and other schools. Uh, let me think here. Um, the memorial itself speaks for itself. And when we did this, uh, well, when you when you see the picture of uh, what we did, you can you gonna bring that one up? Yep, sir. There we go. Okay, if you're looking at there, you see it, it's a peace sign. In the in in that in the memorial there is a uh, it's uh, uh, let's see, was it the number is 73? That's the that's the year we put it. That that's the year that was that year. And what we do is we bring these students in. And you know they help us with the memorial, and, and they put this uh, 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 peace sign together. Uh, this is one thing we can do for uh, students uh, to educate them. Um, the, the the it was very powerful. Those pictures were up there, and people were looking at those pictures. They're very they're, they're very emotional. They're you know that they're they're true. Uh, we need to you know we need to do more of this. Uh, we need, you know, uh, Sukru says that, you know, we just shouldn't always do it around the anniversary, you know, we should be doing it all the time. And I, and I totally agree with her. Uh, we're going to, so we're going to, when we get back up, we're going to start, uh, start thinking about things that we can do, uh, you know, on, on nuclear energy and, and things um, while, uh, uh, you know, and other ways to make the point about nuclear energy, nuclear bombs, uh, uh, and, uh, and so, but but the other there's the sign there's the posters there, but uh, it, what happened was just about two or three days ago, I happened to turn on the TV and they had two young two young uh, uh, Japanese young people a man and a woman, who were just outside the drop zone and uh, and and 
and they they experienced the explosion, and they went into the zone after after the explosion, and they were they were talking about uh, their experience, uh, their experience is and who what they saw, and it was just one thing. I mean, you just you you sit there as if you went down the more uh, the memorial at this time. You just sit there and you shake your head. You know, I mean, you. You realize, you know, here's some of the, uh, the kids working on the memorial. Uh, uh, and we also had, uh, um, uh, uh, we had, had other people. I was up on the pier yelling down to them, telling them, you know, directing them and, 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 and telling them, oh, this has got to be straighter. That's got to be here. You know, it was, it was, a, it was a good project. Uh, but it was, the, and this is the first time we deviated from the, pr from the normal way we put up uh, uh, the memorial. Uh, it's, it's completely changed. This is at night. We had a vigil at night, uh, uh, which was really important. Um, it was just, it's incredible. The sunsets are incredible. Uh, the the uh, candlelight vigils are incredible. They were, that's a good shot of it. Um, you know, and, and it, people come really impressed with these, these, these things and they get involved. When we, when we have, when we have, when we like the memorial, uh, you know, I mean, We'll, we'll set it up and then, you know, and, and when it, the dust comes in and we'll say, <laughs> excuse me, the dust will come down and we'll, 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 we'll say, anybody want to help us light the uh, memorial? Well, the, the memorial would be lit, lit maybe 40 minutes, even, maybe 30 minutes. It just, people just grab the lighters and they go get in there and they go get in there. And, and some people just, you know, some people will stay there until they make sure every single canner is, uh, uh, is I mean every single candle is lit. Oh, I forgot another person, very important person too, is JJ. She's very important, and uh, she's part of our memorial work. Works at our memorial. So these names will be pop popping in my head because I, I'm, my memory sometimes is, uh, needs to be worked on. Anyway, uh, and it, people would like to get involved, uh, and so what I want to say is, you know, uh, you know, the organization needs to be. be I'm I'm sure we are. But you know we, we all you know we need to be proactive. This pandemic has kind of slowed us down. I'm sure it has. I mean, we can't do what we really want to do. We're not all out there. So when we when when we get when we get things straightened out, we need to go back in and and, and really you know really get get work at it and get you know really work at it because it's important that we uh, uh, you know we get back active activists and and we do what we can do. But right now we're doing what we can do, and and I, and uh, it's. Uh, Sometimes it's a little stretch, uh, could be, you know, because of the pandemic, uh, but we, you know, I'm, you know, I'm proud of this organization. Uh, I'm proud of, of our chapter. Um, we have a, uh, in a, uh, in a chapter that's very busy when we get going. And uh, um, anyway, I want to thank everybody again. Uh, I hope you uh, like our presentation. Um, this is important. Uh, and you come to when you come to uh, California, we'll be down at Santa Monica Beach. Uh, we'll be there. You, you know, you're all welcome to come in. And, and we've had a lot of members from uh, outside the organization come down. And uh, if we have a if we have a uh, candlelight vigil, we'll hand you a lighter and you go out there and help us uh, light it up. Or you can just, you know, uh, take advantage of what we have behind the table. And uh, you know, we stand behind a table and people come up and talk. And we take our turns at the table and talk to people the conversations have been incredible uh you you know uh there, there there are times early on in the memorial it was very emotional because we had the young men and women come back from Iraq and Afghanistan the counts were going up and it just got out of control and we, we literally had to t sometimes walk away from the table and just go off by ourselves because you know the emotions were just really uh, uh really something and and we really got busy you know and so uh again you know the time we've put into it has been worth every little bit of it. And it's important that, you know, uh, that we run into, we meet people like Sukuru, uh, who have, who is just really just, it's just been an honor to know her. And, 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 you know, she comes up with these, you know, look, can we do this? And sure, you know, you will do it for you. And that's what we did. And, and it turned out great. And I hope that, uh, um, you know, uh, we can keep it up. Uh, you know, it's like I say, we're working down there every, every it's always i say i always say to the members and then because everybody's you know i'm talking to everybody all the time and they you know they're, they're all energized they want to they want to be out there 
uh, they got, you know, it was a thing that they did. They gave up a lot of, they gave up a lot of uh, Sundays uh, to do what they do. And let's see, to speak and meet with you. Okay. And, and uh, uh, thank you, Kathleen. Uh, um, and we will, you know, I mean, uh, uh, it's important that, uh, we, you know, we stay, we all stay communicated with, you know, communicate with each other. It's important that we, you know, we work together, chapters work together. Uh, I'm, you know, uh, especially on, on nuclear issues or any kind of issue, just, you know, Iraq and Afghanistan, Syria, you know, Iran, all those places. I mean, it just, it, you know, it doesn't seem to end. Um, I did a real research on on uh, on the House. They passed a uh, um, they passed a, a, a bill uh, on the nuclear energy um, uh, on uh, um, let me see, let me get my, my my notes out here um, on uh, on uh, um, let's see what do I got here bring uh, bring us into compliance with the international treaties. And, 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 you know, again, you know, they're sitting there, they pass them and, and it's on McConnell's desk, I'm sure it is. And, and, you know, Trump ain't going to sign it anyway. And, uh, you know, and, and Trump is, you know, obviously he's, he's out there trying to in increase our nuclear arsenal. Uh, one of the things I heard early on, and I don't know, you know, one of the things I heard early on and when he got first elected that he wants to produce lower grade nuclear weapons. I don't know what that means. You know, what does that mean? You know what I mean? Uh, you know, if, you, if you're they're smaller, then what do you got to do? Instead of dropping one, you got to drop two or three. You know what I mean? What is that? It doesn't make no sense. And, and, and we, you know, and we got to, we got, you know, we got to tell these people out there that, you know, Things have, they, they need to make things need to make sense. I mean, they, we can't go out and be dropping bombs. Obviously, we haven't, and, and luckily we haven't. It, you know, uh, and but you know the, the arsenals we got are just ridiculous. We all know that. Uh, we need to push to uh, reduce them. In fact, we need to push to get rid of them. And I hope that uh, um, uh, we'll do that. And, and, and I mean, we, you know, we'll get in there and we'll talk to them and we'll say uh, we'll say to the people, hey, listen, you know. Uh, uh, we got to get busy and we got to do something that makes sense, you know, because we're not making any sense. And, uh, you know, it just, it just, it just keeps, you know, right now it just, it just keeps getting worse and, and there's no, it, there's no progression, you know, I mean, it, it seems to be, so what we need to do is we're going to get in there and, and, and when this pandemic gets all over with, we're going to sit there and we're going to go back out there and we're going to tell the people, you know, we're going to start talking to people again, you know, we got to make some changes. That's what we always talk about, changes. We need to be progressive. We need to, you know, we need to stop what we have and we need to do it now. And uh, so I'm going to go from, I'm going to let, uh, uh, let's go now and, and, thank uh, uh, the convention and all the people that are involved that are putting it together. You're, I mean, you know, I'm so proud of you people. Uh, you're really, you know, you're really, you're really doing well. What I've seen so far has been great. And I am so, uh, uh, you know, I'm, so it makes me even more proud to be part of this organization. And, uh, you know, it's a very special organization. And uh, I think that, you know, I think, you know, every one of us know that. And we need to pull together, stand with each other, and, and 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 talk about these issues that are important to us, and and, and tell the tell the public that you know let's get busy, you know let's let's do something do good, let's just change everything, you know let's let's get this peace is important. Um, I work with uh, uh, Cole Pink a lot also, and um, you know she, they talk about peace economy and and they things like this, and that's important, you know. I mean, we need to change how we how we, you know, the conversation that we're having, instead of talking about, you know, this, this, all these people dying and because of this and that, we need to change. We need to say, hey, you know, people are important and we have to stop this, what's going on because it's ridiculous. And we all know that. Anyway, uh, Sukru, you want to take back, take it back or are we going to take some Yeah, questions? actually, yes. Yeah, I just Thank wanted you. to uh, give um, people or, you know, for us to answer some questions. Actually, I've, I've been pasting uh, uh, some links, some resource links on the on the chat. So please make sure to look at it and please make sure to copy it if you wanna uh, save them. Um, and uh, let me see. So, yeah, these are like a bunch of links to uh, Hiroshima Peace Memorial Museums and other things like uh, Nagasaki, um, A-Bomb Museum, 
and also like some links uh, that are uh, pertain to uh, um, Fukushima experience. So yeah, yeah, uh, Q and A. I'm just kind of looking through them. So okay, so I don't think we can answer uh, all of them, but uh, Miles like wrote to us. What have you found the most effective? What actions can we take in our cities? So yeah, quickly. Um, first, like when, when I uh, started anti-nuke and also like Okinawa uh, US military base issues, uh, I started doing hosting uh, documentary films, but probably with documentary film screening is that it's very, very costly. Uh, so even though I established some uh, relationships with the filmmakers, uh, the cheapest uh, showing screening cost um, is about, you know, at least like $150, goes up to like $500. And that's really not affordable. You know, I can't, um, you know, do that. But so, you know, things like the drawings of, uh, drawings by Hibakusha actually is, I think, very, very effective. Uh, and it doesn't cost you anything. Um, so, you know, uh, I hope like people are not intimidated by uh, Arlington West because that's a huge undertaking, but, uh, you know, I invite you all to host something very simple and small. You know, it can be like, a, um, I don't know, like a community center uh, at your, you know, in your communities um, and, you know, um, exhibiting some like 10, 20 pictures. Um, and uh, you can do that and, you know, um, so yeah, uh, I think uh, what I'm trying to say is like visual presentation, uh, I think is the most effective. Um, you can, you know, read about uh, testimonies of Hibakusha as well. Actually, I posted a link to that also. Uh, you can read um, some testimonies uh, from, uh, you know, my, my school alumni and stuff like that too, but. Let me, let me get in here for a second. Okay. Yes. Um, one of the things that we talk about is, is conversation. Uh, the word, the way I like to say it is, we need to have a conversation, not confrontation. And 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 so one of the if you if you want to get a, you know work on your conversation, work and see where you want to go with it. Uh, uh, the people that you're with, you know, you don't need to analyze them, but you know, you know, you got to give them something to uh, uh, you know, want to say something to you. And and so you know you can start out you know like. You know, like what I like this. I like this is we. I like to say, you know, we want to have a conversation, not confrontation, and and uh, and it, it seems to be working, and uh, it it was working. It's been a while since we've been back down there. I'm, some, I'm kind of scratching my head. Um, uh, yeah. So that's it. That's it. The conversation's important, and uh, if we work on that and and have a you know and and let people um, know that you know we're we're, we're interested in them. Uh, and then you know you know you have a lot of success. We've did this for 13 years, and uh, uh, we learned a lot. I mean, I'll tell you who taught me a lot is, is the people that I work with, uh, the people in the memorial. I used to be pretty aggressive. Uh, um, I'm still just a little bit teeny too aggressive, too much in a while. Sometimes, not all the time, though. Not very much. Not, not as much as I used to. But they taught me a lot, and and I and and that's why I use use the term conversation, not confrontation. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, so. Two things uh, before we close. Um, so I just want to say that. Uh, so my invitation to you. Uh, so my 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 dream. My ultimate dream is like you know no nukes uh, from the world. You know we're gonna get rid of nukes uh, from the world. But like before we get there, uh, I want this to be an everyday conversation. It has to be like something that we talk about every day, not only in the month of August, so that we know, uh, you know, everyone knows that uh, nuclear weapons are really not a viable option for anything, okay? It's like you can't use that. And I, so that's one. Uh, but I quickly wanted to answer this very important question from uh, 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 Jerry Condon. So, yeah. Uh, I, I will say more about the uh, relationship between uh, nuclear power and nuclear weapons. So um, really like in Japan, uh, it's being established uh, like why we have so many nuclear power plants in Japan in that tiny little island uh, is because uh, uh, it was like the, uh, it was at the urging of the US government. You know, it's a known fact that after the war, 
uh, you know, people, I mean, they, they wanted us to have nuclear power plants because, uh, so that we can be nuclear weapons ready. So uh, some sources tell us that, you know, uh, Japan actually is nuclear weapons ready, meaning that we can build nuclear weapons in six months if we wanted to. So, uh, you know, even though like people, uh, you know, some people uh, talk as if uh, there are two separate things. Uh, as I said at the very, very beginning of the presentation, the good nuclear and bad nuclear, and, you know, they actually kind of join at the hip. So, um, you know, that's, that's what I wanted to say. Uh, you know, um, I think about a year ago uh, when the U.S. wanted to uh, sell the nuclear power plant technology to Saudi Arabia as well. Uh, the, uh, at the very same time, you know, around the very same time, uh, the possibility of Saudi Arabia uh, exploring, like building nuclear weapons was also discussed. So, you know, you can really see, clearly see the link uh, between the two. Yeah, one other thing I want to yeah. one other thing I want to say is I just thought is that you know the opportunity to uh, the opportunity we've had over the years to meet people from all around the world, and 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 you know they the, the people who aren't in the governments uh, and some even some people that are in governments uh, uh, th they think you know they think like we do I mean you know they want to have they you know. Uh, they're very peaceful people, you know. They 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 understand the people in the United States, who they are, uh, and and they understand that you know we don't want to go around and be, uh, you know, we're not really that way. We don't want to bore. So you know our government's problem, and uh, you know we need to uh, you know go after the you know the members of Congress, especially members of Congress. Uh, there are some in there that are just, you know, I mean Congress, Senate, and the Congress. It just it just I don't know. We know that you know we know that you know, and. And you know we we need to open our voices up a little bit more and and you know I hate to say this but attack them you know with with conversation that makes sense and uh, you know throw some broadsides in there you know and uh, but peacefully uh, do it peacefully you know uh, with a smile on your face and say and always say after you get done thank you go ahead okay so yeah uh, we are going over time a little bit so. Just only like two things that I want to say, and actually, I I again had a question about the resource link. So, oh, okay, hold on, uh, I can't do that. Okay, so uh, first of all, um, I invite you all to like personally contact me if you want to start something up in your communities. I'm at your service. Uh, this is my passion. This is my life work. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, I'm available to you. If you want to plan some events, exhibition, whatnot, I will work for you personally, uh, pro bono. So please contact me uh, and you can find my email link for futurefukushima at gmail.com in the chat. But I, I repeat again, it's all in lowercase letters for futurefukushima at gmail.com. So yeah, uh, so that's one. And uh, before we close, uh, I'm sorry that we couldn't bring up uh, my friend Michiko Kato today. Uh, she actually passed away in January of this year, January 10th of this year. She was a Fukushima evacuee survivor, a fellow activist, dear friend, a mother, the most courageous person that I ever known in my life. And uh, uh, I included her in the program because if she was alive today, she would have been here with me. And uh, I had a video footage of her, but I uh, couldn't play it because I ran out of time. But um, so, you know, it's actually, so all the Hibakusha from Hiroshima Nagasaki are getting old. And they are, you know, uh, unfortunately dying. So we have this huge responsibility on our hands. Uh, we have to uh, carry on with their legacy. Uh, you know, we have to be a messenger that they have been with their courage and uh, uh, dedication. So um, same thing goes, you know, uh, people like Michiko-san 
who were very courageous about speaking up against the government, Japanese government and TEPCO and sharing her own experience. But when people like her pass on, transition to another world, uh, we have to um, you know, take over her work and uh, uh, magnify the experiences of uh, all hibakushas in the world. Um, so I guess, yeah, uh, so that's it. Um, and I'm, I'm so I apologize that I couldn't answer all the Q&As, but as I said, please, 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 if you have any concerns, questions, anything at all, reach out to me personally, uh, Tsukuru, for future Fukushima, or one word in lowercase, at gmail.com. Thank you. And thank you again, too. Okay, thanks so peace. much. Peace. All right, peace. peace. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.